This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This is the Isla Instruments S2400, and yes, I bought this with my own money and I pre-ordered this a while ago. Honestly, I, I kind of held off on pre-ordering this thing for a while, mainly based off of the quality and my experience with the Cordbot, Isla Instruments' first MIDI controller chord creator device. Super cool, really useful and helpful and awesome with its features and idea, but it had such a terrible feel to it and some unfinished features that were just sort of started and never finished and just left on the user interface, which left me feeling a little sketchy. Made me worry with all the features that I was seeing that they wanted to add to this thing that it would suffer a similar fate. Basically bad quality and too many ideas for its own good. Well. TLDR, after talking with a friend of mine, he mentioned that the owner of Isla Instruments said that they learned a lot from that product. So I hope for the best, expected nothing, and pre-ordered the S2400, and it's finally here. So you're probably wondering, uh, how is it? It's amazing and confusing and weird and annoying all at the same time. It definitely beat my hopes um, and confused others and whatnot. So uh, yeah, let's check it out. <laughs> Before I get into my pros and cons list about this thing, I just wanted to make a quick beat to kind of go through some of the workflow on this. So I have some samples loaded up here that I have used either from the internal sounds as well as recorded some, which is actually one of the strong suits about this thing is that it's super straightforward to sample and assign and sequence within seconds. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we got a kick here. All right, let me go to my level. Cool, I'm gonna go to multi-mode level. So this gives us eight different levels based on wherever these faders are. So for example, you know, if that was max and they all kind of go like this, you got really low, uh, really high to really quiet. And the pads are velocity sensitive, but by default they're not. So I kind of left it in that mode to kind of use it in that old school way. So let's go ahead and uh, record a kick pattern. Cool, we'll go to our next sound, which is a... Okay, so this clap is way too loud. I'm gonna go to the envelopes, turn down our decay. The envelopes are actually really cool. So by turning this fader up, it's turning the decay down. And if I press A, you can see a better, uh, higher resolution of what the envelope is actually doing. Um, it's a pretty high res envelope, which is really cool because it's percentage based not time-based like most synthesizers. So this is actually a percentage of your entire sample. So if your sample is 30 minutes long and you set your attack to 50%, your attack's 15 minutes long. I don't know why you would ever want to do that. You never know, you could do whatever you want. But if I go to this Alpha, Beta, Kappa, Gamma logo, I don't, I don't know what that sign is, forgive me. It's probably something musical related and I sound like a fool. You can kind of turn down the overall um, amount of time or percentage to time of your sample percentage to time of sample yeah i think that makes sense so i can make it really short no that's not what i wanted oh, why would you do that what are you doing no stop moving that okay cool so that's there we'll go to level multi same thing Okay, cool, that'll work. Sure, let's go to our hats now, which is this one here. I'll turn the level down. This gets kind of confusing at times because you have to kind of think of this a bit backwards if you're coming from the MPC world where you set up the way the sound sounds first, then record it into the sequence. Because if I were to record this this loud into the sequence and then I just go to my level and bring the level down, it's not gonna do anything unless I select override. Um, this is, I'll talk about this more later, but here, we'll go ahead and set this down. Actually, you know what, I'll just go to multi-mode level. Sure. 
awesome. That's this sound here. I'm gonna set this to a high pass. That's pretty cool. Shift B, I'm already here, modify pattern. So what I just did by modifying the pattern is committed these filter settings to the pattern itself. You kind of have to do this because if I were to turn this off, it would just jump back to where it was. And that also turns off when you hit record. Again, more on that later, because that's kind of my biggest gripe with this thing, but I guess it kind of makes sense for having this weird multi-mode way of working. So we have this here, we'll go to level, same thing, multi. So this sample is a little funky. You can kind of hear it there. It's like, whoop. so what I'm going to do is go to our loop slice of this, press A, and yeah, there's a bunch of air there at the beginning. So this is actually pretty nice because you have, um, I think this is percentage, this is milliseconds, and then this is by sample. So I can go here, zoom in, oh God, and then go in by, okay, maybe a little bit. Oh, easy partner, easy. Cool, you hit save, and I wanna save this file, and uh, let's see if that fixed it. Awesome, that fixed it. Let me go ahead and check this sound. Okay, that sounds already good. Wait, why did that just get super loud? Okay, I have no idea why that got loud, and now it's quiet again. What the hell was that about? Another quick note, this is not the absolute latest firmware because the latest firmware was crazy buggy compared to this one. I had a bunch of sounds dropping out, random knobs registering values when I wasn't touching them. I'd be over here and something over there would move. Um, so I went back one tick and it's way better, but it still kind of does some funky stuff. Okay, where are we at? We are here. Let's get to the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this pattern to four bars and listen to our keys. Something I sampled from the Nord. We'll go multi-pitch. What's cool with the multi is you also have filter settings for each individual um, pad. That's pretty cool. So um, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and record this sound. Awesome. As you're editing unless you set it to override mode but again more on that later it's really funky so this is kind of the beat we got so far took a couple seconds Pretty cool, uh, but as far as pushing it further than here, 
this is where its limitations and creativity will take you further because there are no LFOs and the, the original SP1200 didn't have any LFOs either. That's fine. There are, however, some useful envelopes, which you kind of saw me mess with, but they only go to your amp, AKA volume, pitch, and filter. And there are no effects like a delay or reverb on this thing. Um, you do have a ton of banks, but only eight voices. And you could also get creative with things like copying samples, multi-modes, and that modify pattern feature, which is one of the things I love only because this does something that is super backwards to me. And that feature kind of saves, <laughs> saves my life for uh, an exaggeration. And by the way, the, a lot of what this does is exactly the way that the OG SP1200 does. So it makes sense for things like I said, the no LFOs, limited modulation and eight voices. But sometimes I just kind of question why in this day and age, you know, but I guess that's probably an entire separate video. So, okay, my main list of cons and some pros, but uh, let's get to that after a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for Ever. And I've built multiple websites on Squarespace and I keep suggesting it to my friends whenever they want to do anything artistic, e-commerce, or just have a nice landing page to showcase some of your work. So trust me, I've done the due diligence and I spent way too much time trying different offerings and other sites when it came to domain hosting or website building or e-commerce and Squarespace did it all for me, especially when it came down to price and features. Some of my favorite features are the ability to easily sell any type of digital products, even zipped files of, for example, some samples. Go check them out. I got proof there on the site. And these also have links that will automatically get emailed to anyone who buys them and will disappear within 24 hours. The SEO optimization on Squarespace is also awesome. This helps your site get ranked up higher in the Google search results. And last but not least, the website templates that are customizable so you can quickly find one that looks amazing and then fine tune it to your liking. This has been huge to me, not only to just make me feel like I know what I'm doing, but allow me to kind of see the vision for my website in my head and achieve it on my own. That was huge to me. So. If you've been looking for a website solution, I suggest you check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your site, head to squarespace.com slash rickytines for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, onto the list. So the cons, I mentioned this briefly, actually a ton of times, the modify pattern workflow thing that is a favorite feature of mine only because it saves me. Well, that's because the workflow feels a bit backwards coming from an NPC. This is for sure subjective, and I'm guessing this is how the OG SP1200 work, so it might be by design, but here's kind of why I think it's weird. In order to make changes to a sound or a parameter of a sound, after it's been recorded into a sequence, you need to go into this weird kind of like override mode. For example, let me turn all this down except for the kick. Right, so let's say I wanted to change the pitch of just the kick. If I go to pitch and move this around, nothing's happening because the pitch is already recorded with the sequence. But if I press A, it will override the current value of whatever the parameter is, right? Cool. But as soon as I hit record, that override turns off. If I press it again, nothing happens, right? But if I turn this off, now it's back. So what you need to do is you kind of Say you want it here, you hit Shift A, scroll down to modify pattern, click, scroll down, click. Now this is committed to that pattern. So if we're here and I take that off, it goes back to the pattern that I set, or it goes back to the way I set the parameter to this pattern. Kind of weird, kind of funky because, cool, I like, let's just do minus one. Shift A, scroll down, modify, scroll down, enter. Kind of weird. Same thing with envelopes. Like if I wanted this to be a little shorter, I go here. You can't really hear it, right? You can't hear it at all. Yeah, I can't hear it at all. But if I go Shift A and modify pattern and select it, now it adds that value to the recorded to the recorded sequence. It's it's kind of funky, right? What is the 
I forget how to go back. It's a uh, copy, right? Yeah, there we go. Cool. At least there's an undo, so in case you do something weird. So that always kind of bugged me. And this is probably heavily tied to the ability to use the multis to record multiple states of parameters at once based on which pad you hit, which is awesome. But I just wish that there was a quicker way to take like a big booming kick or a big booming bass line and turn it down into like a shortened kick. And yes, you can set the S2400 to an override all and set it to uh, the track as well as the parameter instead of a global thing. So that's a plus, but I just kind of, I don't know, it's kind of a funky way where you should have to focus on what the sound is prior to recording it in. I'm kind of the opposite. I kind of get the sounds in roughly and fine tune it as it plays back, kind of like the way I do on my NPCs, which you can do. You just need to constantly modify the patterns, which is a few steps. And second, this one's a bit nitpicky, but the number pad is numbered. This is like wearing a raincoat with an umbrella over your head indoors while it's raining outside. I mean, okay, that's a major stretch, but I just wish that they would have utilized the font section on here a bit more because there's a lot to remember on this device. Thankfully, there is a help button, which I am constantly pressing as I get better with muscle memory, but that memory is hard to achieve since the number pad section is constantly changing depending on what page you're on. And with that being said, the number pads don't always enter in numbers, even if the parameter you want to change is number based. For example, if I were to go back, I can change my patterns. That's cool. Oh God. But if I go to, let's say my envelopes and I go here and I want to change what this is and I press F5, nothing happens. I just start turning on some crazy settings of what I don't even know yet, unless I press help. Third would be the build quality. I don't want to spend too much time here, but it's exceptional in some areas and okay in others. And it's also way too damn heavy. I don't know why, like mega heavy. It's really, really heavy. It makes me not want to take it out for a gig because it would just break my backpack straps or something. Also, the faders are, let me get back here. The faders are like a little loose for my liking. They feel kind of a little too light. It's kind of, I don't know. I guess it's all preference. They just kind of feel a little meh to me. And, you know, I want them to have a little bit of resistance when I'm trying to dial in that precise pitch multi. Oh, this is what I wanted to mention earlier, but I decided to not even go into it, which is these mute and solo buttons. They are not good at all. This kind of starts giving me uh, flashbacks to the chord bot. They are super soft, but don't respond until you just like put your finger way Okay, hold on. I probably can say that better. Uh, until you press harder. For example, check this out. If I go to, let's say, TR8S mode, which I was already in, I can press this all day long. And there, I have to like jam my finger in. It's, come on, buddy. You know, you really have to like sit there and focus on what you're pressing in order to turn it on. Because if you just go like this, or just a couple... Yeah, see, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's hit or turn off. It's hit or miss. And again, this could kind of be a my device thing and yours might be better. I don't know, but they're just uh, like a little questionable. And I think what sucks sometimes too is like when I'm really focused on pushing this, sometimes my finger will hit, you know, my chorizo fingers will hit one of the pads. And now I'm editing something that I didn't even want to edit to begin with. But outside of that, the rest of the build is awesome. The pads are sensitive. They feel good-ish. The knobs on here are super nice. These hard buttons that are align the, um, the S2400 are really legit and feel like they're going to last for a long time, as well as this main encoder with the select feels, feels really good. And the foot pads on this thing are like for a Hummer or something. I would have been fine with rubber feet. I don't know who asked for this. Lastly would be the song mode. Oh my God, this thing is confusing. Maybe it takes some time, but it's like 1010 black box funky. You're adding parts, but then you have to kind of add the repeats first and they're all separated events, which is weird. And I know this will eventually lead to some really fun, cool ways to make a song that does a bunch of cool, interesting things as it plays out. But by default, just to play one pattern to the next, it's, it's a bit tough. I mean, here, watch. So I can go and move down song one. Uh, no, I was trying to get to help. Okay, cool. Here we go. So what's the first step? I want to add a pattern. We'll just play pattern 10. 
right? And then I want to do a repeat. So add repeat, yes. But the repeat goes to the stop. So right now I'm repeating the stop twice. But to add, to go up here, I want to add a repeat to this. So I say add repeat, but it keeps adding it underneath. So I'm like, okay, what? So we'll just erase this event. We'll go above this, hit repeat. Yes, repeat pattern 10 twice. And then what do I want to do after this? I want to play, you know, pattern one. I got to go up to change four times then here. So it kind of always goes down, but I just kind of wish the repeats were changed because if I were to add another um, tempo change, repeat, you know, you have a bunch of cool different things you can do and you could even dive in a bit further and actually change a bunch of different parameters per part, but it's really kind of confusing. And again, I wish that these number pads had some font dedicated to at least one thing on here that would help kind of speed up the workflow and the muscle memory of this thing. Because to know that F1 is number one and that F2 is number two, I know, I know, it says it right there, you know? And then for nothing to have F2 or F3 labeled, like if I were to go to an envelope, like I press this, it lights up, but it doesn't tell me what it's doing at all. I press one or two or three, same thing, no idea what's happening, but they are actually doing things. Oh, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. How do I go down in the, I wanna look at help. See, look, now that's doing this thing. <sighs> okay, you know what, let's, let's, uh, let's get to some pros. I swear I don't hate this thing. The sound is amazing. It sounds really good to me. The crunch, the punch, the alias, it's all delicious. And this TR8 mode, or oh, the TR mode is pretty cool. And I, I can definitely see this being useful to some. I just wish that the mute and solo buttons didn't suck this much. And the workflow of this thing can be very, very fast. It packs a ton of features, more than I think it needs. And sometimes it kind of starts to feel like that Homer Simpson car that he got to design that one time with all the cup holders. But if you kind of just focus on using this in a simple way, it's incredible and incredibly fast. And this whole multi-mode workflow is amazing. I love the ability to have different pads be set to different parameters and then being able to record all that into the sequence. I do wish, however, under the pitch, it did have some scales like major or minor. I think as diatonic and harmonic or something like that. I just want there to be more. And I know all of this kind of goes against what I mentioned earlier with that weirder uh, modify pattern issue, which basically, you know, destroys this situation, but maybe have like a separate amp or, you know, for some basic levels or basic amp tuning. I mean, I guess I can use the override. Either way, there's, there's no excuses to make music nowadays. So stop complaining, me. <laughs> it's also, oh, another big thing is this also has USB audio and it's so good works exactly as you would expect and lastly this is a funky one but i love that the envelopes are percentage based not time based and they go across your whole sample i just think that that's really cool would i keep this thing for now will it end up in the closet in a few weeks maybe probably but not really sure yet i'm trying to really learn this thing and you know it sounds badass and if i just focus in on what i want it to do it gets me there quickly and easily Otherwise, I just start asking too many questions and I get kind of lost. And uh, yeah, either way, that's it for me. Thanks for kicking it as always. I appreciate you. Love you. Hope to see you again next week. And until then, you already know what to do. And that is to share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. What? Where'd my track go? Yep. What track is this? Oh yeah, that's the other track I made.